Hey, what's up everybody? This is Muth24, and today I'm going to take a look at the first volume of Black Science by Rick Remender. Uh, it's titled How to Fall Forever, and this is a graphic novel that I kind of picked up on a whim. I mentioned in the unboxing video when I got this that it was a series that I picked up because I liked Rick Remender's work on the Venom series so much, and I also like quantum physics and theories of the multiverse and parallel realities and all that, uh, especially when it's done well. And so I was very interested to see how he would handle a story like that where it's more science fiction than the typical superhero direction of comic books. Uh, it has sort of a classic sci-fi feel in the style of, like, Bradbury and Asimov and that sort of thing, um, but the aesthetic of all the characters and, and everything is, like, late 80s into the early 90s, uh, some cyberpunk influences there, uh, we have some sort of exaggerated uh, animal warriors that we see in a couple of the realms that they visit, and uh, I'll show off some of the art here in a bit, but on the cover here, I, I like this sort of classic, um, oh, what's the word, what's, 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 sorry, what's the uh, titles I'm thinking of? Almost like a Buck Rogers or, um, what's it, is that Planet Terror? Not Planet Terror, that's, uh, that's Grindhouse. I'm trying to think of, f f is it Forbidden Planet? I don't remember the name of it, the, the old science fiction film where it's fighting the robots. It'll come to me at some point, I'm sure, but, uh. Very sort of classic pose here uh, with two of the characters with their, their suits on uh, for traveling through the multiverse and surrounded by all these frog creatures here that we'll talk more about in, the, in a minute here. Uh, I like the colors on the front here too. It's Instead of it being uh, sort of a, you know explosive bright colors, it's very dark and like a cool set of colors. Uh, you know, we have the green and sort of brown here for the the pillars that they're standing on. We've got a lot of blue for the frogs, purple in the background there. Uh, very sort of ethereal and, and spacey, and I, I think it works well for the uh, the feel of, of this first volume. On the back here, we have, uh, again, some more art of those, those frog people there on the bottom. Uh, a little description of what this volume is about, some praise for it from uh, Patton Oswald and... Uh, couple of websites here on the back. And uh, this is actually set as an MSRP at $9.99. I got it through Cheap Graphic Novels for, I think, 6 bucks. Uh, either way, I think it's an absolute steal for how thick this volume is. It might not look super thick on the, uh, the camera there, but it's basically about twice as thick as the recent Nova volume that I got. And I think around as thick as the... Uh, one of the larger volumes of Why the Last Man. So you definitely get quite a bit in each of these issues. Um, I'm not sure if this is a limited series or if it's going to be an ongoing thing, uh, but if they keep this length for each individual issue, it's quite a meaty uh, offering, that's for sure. So uh, as I mentioned, Rick Remender is the writer. Uh, Matteo Scalera is the artist, and uh, he has a very interesting art style that I'll, I'll show off here in a minute. Um, we have a little bit of a foreword from uh, James Robinson, who I don't know exactly uh, what he's worked on before. It doesn't say like a, like his role or anything. I assume he's someone who works at Image. Uh, but he talks about Remender's other works and, and sort of the direction that they're going with this story and how much he enjoyed it personally, which is cool. Uh, then we start off here with the first volume. Got some nice artwork there, again with the frog people. And... Uh, you can see just how, like, colorful everything is, even in that first panel. Um, there's a lot of dark backdrops, but there's a lot of, like, bright neon colors that sort of uh, interrupt that, and I like the way that that looks in this. Uh, it's sort of like a watercolor paint style um, to a certain degree, I think. Uh, there's also sort of those, like, hard sketch directions that they have with the character designs. They had a little bit of that in uh, the Venom comics, but obviously Marvel has a few house styles they tend to stick to. Um, the character models in this, interestingly enough, uh, for the humans at least, if I can jump to where there's a bunch of them, are almost cartoony in, in a great way, I think. in that Like, they're all very exaggerated facial proportions. Um, their bodies are typically pretty skinny and, like, lanky limbs and all that. Uh, you can tell they're, like, that one, there's a character with a big nose there. we got a guy with sort of a, a big forehead. Um, and I like that style. I think it's it's kind of a odd, um, contrast to the more dark and serious tone that we have with the series. And I think that's, it's kind of cool, just for something bold and different. Uh, when the story starts off, though, we are basically dropped into the thick of it. Um, as you saw in the first few pages there, there were, like, giant turtles, 
Um, and we also see the uh, frog people that I mentioned, and they're sort of on this alien jungle planet and trying to get back to uh, the device that they constructed that allows them to travel through the multiverse and travel to, to different realities. The problem is that the device has been smashed, or at least part of it has, and so it's basically just jumping uh, at certain points, and when they start off, they're trying to get some water to cool down um, the generator because uh, it's going to overheat, and the thing will just basically send them to random places. So it's kind of fun in that sense that uh, Remender and Mateo get to, uh, or Scalera rather is his last name, uh, get to do some really fun uh, and weird things with these different environments. Uh, the first one, obviously, is, is the frog people, and the second one is basically an alternate version of World War One, where the Germans are using their old, you know, World War One technology and fighting Native Americans who somehow got their hands on, like, super advanced alien technology and have these battle armor suits and a floating city in the sky and these uh, hawks that uh, patrol the skies that have, um, like, laser vision and all that. This is just crazy things. Um, one of the other places they will end up going to is sort of a, almost like a Tatooine market sort of a place, um, a more alien backdrop than the other ones, uh, in the sense that it's, it's, it's filled with more aliens, uh, than just, you know, frog people, but it, it's kind of cool, uh, and there's a good shot of it there, and there's a ton of detail in a lot of these, these big shots, um, which I really like. It, it's almost like, uh, if you combine Tatooine with, uh, almost like a Mad Max setting, that's what you get out of, uh, out of this this third place that they go to, um, there is another planet, they, they, another world that they go to, which I won't really spoil for the sake of I don't want to give away too much uh, in these panels. But um, the thing that's great about this story is that I mentioned that they throw you into the thick of it right off the bat, but they do jump back uh, and explain more and more what led up to them jumping into the multiverse there and why all these people went with them. Because there's like eight people or so uh, when we start the story off that are traveling with this group. And while I think it's great that the first volume does, uh, you know, sort of establish who the characters are and all that, uh, and gets to do all these fantastic different settings uh, with the art style and, and the, the way that it impacts characters, what I think it does best is the fact that a little past the halfway point, it starts explaining the rules of this t uh, multiverse travel and, and sort of uh, laying down the foundation of everything that's going to come. And that's, I think, important because, you know, you can have uh, a story like this that's all fun and, and sort of, I don't want to say nonsensical, but a little bit more loose in its interpretation of, of how we travel through the multiverse and all that, uh, like, say, Doctor Who. And that's fine. That's, you know, that's fun or whatever. But I personally prefer it when it's like, there are consequences for your actions. If you're going to dabble in this theoretical science, if you're going to sort of play God, if you will... Uh, you're going to have to face some really hard choices. You're going to have to face some things that you were not prepared for. And I like that in this, uh, that it, it definitely throws that at the reader and the characters uh, before the end of this volume and gives us something of an idea, not too much, just a little hints of the idea of what we're going to face in the ultimate endgame. And I really I really like that. I, I think it's, it's nice to sort of tease that direction, which is, I think, even harder to do considering the fact that they're also jumping back to before they went uh, on this this grand adventure, uh, inadvertently all of them going, obviously, because they were only supposed to send a small group, and they weren't supposed to go the time they took off. Uh, but, you know, there's this whole mystery of who smashed the machine and why. Uh, what happens to everyone when they do get back, if they get back. Uh, so it, it, I think it poses all these interesting questions for, for the characters, but it also poses questions for the, the greater story, um, the, the science of this, and the, the sort of fantasy of it as well. Um, and I really appreciate that. So I think as long as they uh, remain aware of the fact that they've, they've you know, sort of already laid these ground rules out, that, uh, that, that this group is going to do uh, a great job with, with the second volume, which I think comes out like end of this month or next month. I, I thought about buying both of them at the same time, but I was like, well, I'll get one for now and see how I like it, and then uh, if I like it enough to get the second one, I'll go ahead and do that. I certainly will be picking up the second one because this is, is fantastic, I think. Um, it's definitely weird and different, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I definitely like weird and different every once in a while in my comic books. Like I mentioned, uh, Why the Last Man was nothing to do with superheroes. It's all about 
people in this uh, sort of almost post-apocalyptic setting with uh, a world with only one male uh, human and one male monkey, and and that's honestly the single best comic book I've or graphic novel I've ever read. So uh, sometimes branching out and doing weird things, uh, reading weird things is is good. But yeah, I definitely recommend this. It's it's bizarre, but also um, very satisfying in the, the way that it delivers the story and uh, portrays the characters, because it's, it's very much a gray area with their morality and uh, their motives for everything. So that's, I think, appropriate given that they're dabbling in this, so, as they, they refer to it, the, the black science, the forbidden science. Um, and that's pretty much it for this review, so with that, I will see you guys next time.